Welcome to Christiana's Psychic Cafe. We have a great show for you here today. This is a pre-recorded show, so please hold your calls. I have interviews today with two great tarot professionals who are each finding their tarot voice. And one of the things they have in common and also have in common with me is the work they're doing on YouTube. Right now, there seems to be an explosion of really great tarot videos on YouTube. Arguably, one of the best out there is Beth Henry. Let's take a look at one of her offerings so you can see what I'm talking about, and then we'll go right into our interview with Beth. You know, Valentine's is my favorite holiday, and there's no one I'd rather spend it with than you. If old man Winter had been a little more cooperative, we could have been doing this outside El Frito. But we'll make the best of it. We always do. I wrote you a little poem this year for Valentine's Day, and I got it safekeeping here. Let me just get it. Oh. You know, you never can find one of these when you need it. <laughs> oh, oh, funny glasses. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, don't worry, I got a pair for you too. There you are. Oh, Lord, where are my manners? I completely forgot to shut my phone off. Oh, goodness gracious me. One second. There we go. All right, it's off the hook now. No problems. Let's see what else we go. Um, I have been looking for this earring everywhere. Oh, good Lord. It's like a woe worse in here. Ugh, okay. Wait a minute. I, give me just a second. Wait. Here it is. I found it. <clears throat> I don't remember what came before. You touched my life and I longed for more. The first time we met, who would guess simplest beginnings holding a lifetime quest. Communication between us lasts for hours with riches far beyond jewelry, money or flowers. Magic certainly comes from a place within but you gave magic a place to begin. In times seeming hopeless to me, you provide support, options, and possibility. You are the keeper of all secrets and the giver of all ways. You are as old as humanity's seeking and as young as this very day. So my Valentine, pick is never very hard. I love you so, dear tarot cards. Could you, could you, could you? As a reader, one of the things I get asked the most is relationship questions. Where is Mr. or Mrs. Right? Is this true love? Will the right person come along? Lover's Path Tarot Deck answers those questions. In my last video, I said that every tarot deck has a purpose. Our job is to find how it best serves our purpose. In the conundrum of relationships, whether it be with ourselves or with others, the lover's path is well suited to answer those concerns. The author herself says that all love relationships tend to mirror the relationship we have with ourselves. And this deck is a tool to examine and improve those relationships. If you've seen any of my other work, you know I love the art-based tarot. This one is no exception with its beautiful Italian Renaissance style paintings. The artwork is just wonderful. There is, of course, some different verbiage used in the names of the major cards. And by now, you may have noticed something very fascinating that sets this deck apart. 
In both the major and the minor arcana, we see depictions of classical and mythological love stories. We have Merlin, Cleopatra, Arthur, Romeo, Isis, Penelope, and Persephone, just to name a few. Now, through each of the four suits of the minor arcana, it shows the progression of one famous couple's love story. And here we have the cups. And the cups depict Tristan and Isali. And according to the Little White Book, it shows lives ruled by extreme emotions, such as love, desire, sorrow, yearning, and anger. Then we have the staves. And our four minor arcana suits do have a little bit different words on some of them than our traditional. We don't have wands, we have staves. And they represent Siegfried and Brunhilde and show how the force of love can spur us to great deeds, making us strong where we were once weak. Then we're going to move on to the arrows that are appropriately for Cupid and Psyche. And with the arrows, it depicts how love grants wisdom. Let me just get through a few more of these. Just the artwork is so beautiful. So beautiful. Now we'll move on to the coins. And these represent Diani and Zeus and depict the power of the suits of coins to transform our lives. And let me get to the court cards back here and show you that with the court cards we have princess, prince, queen, and king. Now let's get back to the major cards and I want to go through a few more of these with you. And I am going to go out on a limb here and say that this is the best deck I have found for love and relationship readings. The cards are a bit larger than your standard playing cards. So let's do our little comparison. There you go, you see how much bigger they are. So you may need to bear that in mind when you're using this deck. The Little White Book does offer two relationship spreads in the back. And they are the relationship cross and also the Lover's Path spread. And these do complement the cards with their theme of love and relationships. Also, the meanings are given for both the upright and the reverse positions, so they can be read both ways. I cannot think of a better Valentine's gift than to pick up a deck that is dedicated to the good, the bad, and the sometimes thorny sides of love. So until next time, keep calm and tarot on. Beth Henry, so nice to see you here at Christiana's Psychic Cafe. How are you? I'm great, and I'm honored to be here with you today. Oh, gosh. Well, thank you. We love the video. We love all your videos. I've, I've been watching them, but, of course, I, I just played the one, I suppose, in honor of Valentine's Day, The Lover's Path. And, of course, I love The Lover's Path tarot as well. But the costumes, the accents, were you like a theater major in college or something? Not at all. I just have grandchildren, you know. And, and who knew that dressing up and being crazy was my tarot voice? Wow, your tarot voice. Well, how? okay, let's go there. How did that happen? How did you discover that that was your tarot voice? Well, to start out with, I kind of dabbled a little bit with tarot in college. But, you know, life, children, growing up, I, I just never got into it until my children left the house. And then about 2011 is when I picked it up again and met some lovely people in the, our community and hooked up with one named Carol, and we started a blog together. 
And so we needed material for the blog. And I love dressing up with my grandkids. And I thought, gosh, I could do some reviews and act out the theme of a lot of these tarot decks. And so that's basically how we got to this point is, you know, I just like to dress up and be crazy. <laughs> well, and I, I just love the idea, you know, it's, it's true. I think we all have our own tarot voice and, and finding that voice is, is the thing. Now, are you are a professional reader at this point, are you? Yes, I am. Although my really my first thing that I do with the tarot or that I really feel is the main thing I do with the tarot is for manifestation. I do spell work, my daily meditations. So more so than reading, I use the tarot every day for those things. Now, do you do that professionally? Yes, and I've, had, I've helped people with that. Talk to us about how that works. Uh, why would, what, like, how, how do you, I want to know every piece of this, how you advertise it, what happens in a session. Tell, t tell us everything. Well, people usually come to us, you know, through our blog site. And I've said before that every tarot deck has a purpose. And so the way you use the tarot is to find how that deck works toward purpose. So if you're wanting love to come into your life, let's just use the main one we get the most is love. Then you might use the lover's path tarot uh, for those manifestation or that reading. So I think as readers, our job is really to hook up um, the deck with the person's needs or how it can best help them. There's just so many good tarot decks out there to read with and to help people achieve what they want in life or to grow spiritually. So when someone comes for a reading, do you, do you see them in person? Most of the time it is in person. I've done several on Skype too. Mm -hmm. I, I like doing them in person though. I like having that person right in front of you and then to come back later and say, oh my gosh, how did you know? It was right on. And mm -hmm. you know. So you will include some manifestation with, within a regular reading. That's just part of, of what you do and part of your service. Yes, and I, I send those people off with ways that they can continue to develop or grow in whatever their issue was. You know, and, and that's how I feel like the tarot can uh, contribute. You can send them off with pictures of tarot cards for visual manifestation. Um, so I don't like to just end at the reading. I like to know that I'm sending them out there with homework as well. I love that. I think that's great. So one question I, I love to ask. I think that most of us, when we were children, did not dream about becoming tarot professionals and yet we all end up here and it's always an interesting story when you were a child what did you imagine yourself being well i was raised catholic and oddly enough i find a lot of people in this profession that were raised catholic um, I really just kind of was raised in a time where women thought they'd grow up, they'd get married, they'd be housewives, they'd raise children. Uh, never in my wildest dreams would I've ever thought, uh, you know, I was going to be a tarot reader or, you know, a witch, you know, the W word, you know, with our spell crafting. But honestly, that has just been, I don't know, it just seems like um, my first 40 years of life, you're just going through the motions and it wasn't until I connected with the tarot that all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is what I should have been all along. And it just really helped me develop spiritually. So, so how did that connection happen? Well, you know, when you start to read the tarot and study the tarot, all of a sudden my dreams, you know, got very vivid and, um, it just seemed like the more that I studied and got into the tarot, the more they were really answering questions for me. You know, I do readings for myself. I don't know if you do. Oh, sure, sure. But, you know, some, some do, some don't. But um, I don't know. With the tarot, it just seemed doors and give me answers and cause me to want to learn more. That's something with the tarot. You know, you never stop learning with the tarot. Right. You know, you're always a master and a student. And so I think 
the, the tarot kind of put me in the spot where I wanted to keep learning, keep developing. You know, you know, tarot is something you grow up, you know, if you grow up in a religious home, that it's not a good thing, you know, and, you know, it's of the devil. But really, that's not the case. It helps me develop my spirituality, help me become who I am. Sure, sure. So do you have family members now who are aware of your pernicious activities and uncomfortable with them? No, nobody's uncomfortable, which is odd and odd, you know, and all my family knows, you know, not too many people in the town itself know. Yeah, I'm from the South and, you know, uh, Baptist church on every corner and we bless my heart. We wouldn't want people to know I'm a heathen, you know, <laughs> but no, everybody in my family knows, my friends know, my very close friends know. Uh, my children know, and everyone's very upset, uh, accepting of it, and actually have come for readings, oh, ask a lot of questions. That's very cool. So, uh, give me an idea of the size of your tarot collection. Well, you know, that's kind of a secret because we don't want anything getting out to hubby. <laughs> 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 but uh, you are seeing some of it back there on the shelves. Sure. Um, we're probably in the triple digits. Really? Yes. Okay, so is that, I just want to get my bearings here. Do I see Guyan over to the left, second uh -huh. shelf down? Is that hidden, right? Yes, Hidden Realm, Hidden Path, uh, Wizard's Tarot, Anna Kay, Fairy Tarot. Okay. And so one of the things you spoke about, and I, I think this is very interesting, when you look at different tarot decks, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm getting is that when you look at different tarot decks, you will see the possibility that one deck will be better suited for a particular purpose, and another deck might be better suited for another purpose right. and I, I love that idea just you know on a very energetic level mm -hmm. and in terms of magic I in fact I, I do a lot of work with tarot magic as well in fact I, I write a blog on Pagan Square uh, right. using your, your tarot deck as magical tools and, and all of that. And I, I did, I, I do remember writing a post where I talked about this very concept, you know, that to do a particular kind of magic to use a deck that was an energetic match, you know, if you had that luxury. But in terms of reading, you know, just like, you know, down and dirty tarot reading. Yeah. Same thing or no? I mean, do, do the decks read differently for you? And do they read particularly well about those subject matters with which you associate them? Uh, for lack of a better word, I'm going to say that every tarot deck has a personality. And... Um, most of the time, if I do a reading, I'm going to use the Radiant. I'm, mm -hmm. I really like the Pamela Coleman Smith. Mm -hmm. So unless it's particular about love, then I will probably pick something like the Lover's Path. Um, I think that as far as readings, I probably stick to very one or two decks. But when it comes to manifestation and to spell work, well then the field widens up. Now, can you, and, and I, I don't want to, um, if, if, if you don't want to do this, I'll understand, but would you be willing to share with us sort of the, the nuts and bolts of how you do tarot spells? Sure, not, I don't mind at all, because when I do a tarot spell, I don't think tarot in and of itself is the only tool. Mm -hmm. We've got a whole bunch of things we can use, herbs, we can use gemstones. So when I do tarot spells, I try to combine. Um, like, for example, 
if somebody is having problems with love, then I may pick one or two tarot cards that are going to help them visualize obtaining that love in their life. But I'm going to actually add in some herbs as well and maybe even some gemstones that relate to it. So they've got something they can pick up and hold. You know, I've got my gemstones right here. They can pick up and hold it. They can smell it with the herbs. They can visualize it with the tarot cards. I think the more of the senses they can get involved in it, the more powerful that spell is going to work. It needs to really be what I call the full body mm. spell work or manifestation. So that's why the tool um, of tarot is just one thing. It's good for visualizing. Uh, but I also want to stimulate other things. I want things you can touch, smell, taste even. You know, if you've got a good herb that works well in recipes, you might encourage them to use that herb in a recipe. So, Wow, I love that idea, you know, because I, I do understand magic is something that we create with our energy and if our senses are all involved you know there it is now personally and I'm, I'm interested to hear what you would think about this when i think about tarot magic yes certainly the visualization of course and and tarot is nothing if not visual yeah but i also really believe that the cards hold an energy Yes. And so if there's an energy in my life that I don't want in my life anymore, I can find the tarot card that matches that and say to that card, you know, be gone. Exactly. And if there's something I want to bring into my life, obviously, you know, do it. Don't, you know, bring right. it in rather than let it go, manifest it. So I feel like the visualization is a, a really powerful tool there. But I also feel that even if you were blindfolded and couldn't see the cards, that the cards would bring their energy. What do you think? I absolutely agree. But when we're talking about people coming to us for readings or something along those lines where you're wanting to give them a little, you know, manifestation or spell crafting tool to leave with, I think the new people really need that visualization. Sure. You know, they, maybe they haven't reached that level or worked with the tarot a lot like we have, mm -hmm. where you really can pick up on those energies. But, I, oh, yes, I absolutely believe it goes back to the decks having a personality. <laughs> you know, I think even, you know, not just the card, but the deck itself has its own little unique personality or, in, or energy that it puts out. You know, what a uh, wizard's tarot might put out isn't the same when the fairy tarot is going to put out. Right. So I absolutely believe that you can feel that energy. I, I don't know if you manif or if you uh, meditate with your cards, but, you know, I'll usually pick one to meditate for the day. And, yeah, that energy just permeates those cards when you sit down and really use them on a daily basis. Sure. Sure, sure. So talk to me about your goals for the future. You seem to have a, a, a nice thing going on here. What do, you, what do you see for yourself over the next few years? Well, I definitely want to keep up the, re the deck reviews because, like I said, I'm just a clown. I, I love dressing up, and I have fun with it. And yeah, it's a way to get these decks out there and, and let people have a good time watching and get to know the deck, too. I'm also uh, starting uh, to write a book, but can't really say much more, except you heard it here first. There will be a book. Excellent. So, and to continue to educate people through my blog. It, the tarot is such a wonderful tool. It's changed my life, and I'd like to share that with others. Yeah, you know, and I, I love it when you refer to tarot as life-changing. It was life-changing for me as well. And I'm curious to know, you know, I, I know it was sort of in your life when you were younger, but then not so much, and it's come back now full force. How did it make its comeback? Just because it was always there. It was always something I was interested in, even back 
stuck in college. But like I said, you know, life kind of goes on and you put it in the back of your head. And then when my children left, I thought, gosh, I'm going to do this for me. I've always wanted to learn the tarot. So um, I picked up books. I even got a mentor. And for the last three years, I've still been studying. Like I said, you never stop studying, never stop learning. Because it's just that wonderful uh, thing that you know, you're always learning something new. You're always growing. So um, I can't really say what one thing sparked. And I went, hey, I want to learn tarot again. Except that I just had the time. Sure. Sure. Now, you do some work with Oracle decks as well, yeah? I do. Not as much as the tarot. I'll be honest. Those are more like... Um, more meditation card a day, not so much readings for me personally, mm -hmm. although I do like the Oracle decks. And one of my favorite is the Witchlings deck yeah. that just came out. Yes, yes, yes. And you, you've reviewed that already, haven't you? Yes, I have. Because I think I have seen that review. Yes. Absolutely. I love her work. I, I love the... Paulina Tarot very much, and I think the Witchlings look great. I didn't like her other deck as much. Yeah, I did review the Paulina one um, and the Witchlings. Mm -hmm. So I like her colors. Yes. You know, they're just so soft and and just magical in themselves so almost to look at. Sure, sure. Without offending any particular tarot artists i'm i'm curious to know if there is a deck you really don't like or don't resonate with um the decks that i probably don't like as much are the ones that have a whole lot of stuff to look at i f i think i have a little add because i'll start going oh you know look at the pretty light and look at this and look at and i find it hard sometimes to really focus in when there's a whole lot going on in a card. Sure. So that's probably my one thing. This isn't so much about a deck, but just a, probably my biggest pet peeve is if the card stock isn't good. Sometimes you can have the best tarot idea and it's on crappy card stock. Mm -hmm. and you go to play with it and you bent it. Right. And so that's probably my biggest pet peeve. You know, I always say I never met a tarot deck I didn't like, and that is true. You know, I, I usually find something, even about the busy ones, that I can utilize them for, even if it's just those one-card readings. Sure, sure. So when we talk about readings, one of the... One of the areas that I think we all have a different take on is the concept of future predictions. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is the future predictable? Do you make future predictions? What do you think about all that? I think the tarot can give you a scenario if you continue on this path, if things continue to go as they're going, this is going to happen. But we all have the opportunity to change. Sure. And so I think it's a guideline. You know, I don't think the tarot is ever fatalistic in anything. It's only saying, hey, look, here's some signs that if you continue on this path, then this is going to happen. So. Sure, sure, so, sure. Yes, they can to an extent, but I think we always have the opportunity to change our, our path. Always? If you're willing to. <laughs> yeah. I, sure, I think we can. Okay. I would agree with you up to that point. I would say there are some things that there's nothing you can do. It just is. And it just is. And then other things where it's entirely up to you and some things a little of both, you know, depending on the situation. But who knows? Hey, Led Zeppelin said there is always time to change the path you're on. So. <laughs> I'm that <laughs> awesome you know and 
Led Zeppelin is such an interesting thing that I remember being like 14 years old and and having the Zeppelin 4 album that my boyfriend gave me for Christmas and looking at the hermit, you know, opening it up and seeing the hermit and Even at that point, I think I had a resonance for that image, you know, yes. not just because it was all rock and roll and cool and, and Led Zeppelin and whatnot, but it, it was, uh, I knew it was something more or part of a greater whole. Well, that's why they're timeless. Right. You know, because they're always going to resonate, no matter if it was in the early 1900s or today, there's always something we can pull out of the tarot that speaks to us at this moment. Sure. That is that is so true. That is so true. So do you have any decks that you have not yet reviewed that you're about to review? Yeah. What do you got? What do you got? Huh. Funny you should say. I have something right here. The Deviant Moon Tarot. Oh, is this the new borderless one? A new one. This is a new older one. He did put out one with the uh, white border. Mm-hmm. I have but, that one. Uh, but this is, oh, this is yummy. Better without the border, isn't it? It's definitely better because doesn't it for you read more like a story when you've got them side by side and you don't have that white border to kind of stop you? That, that could be the ADD talking again. I don't know. Well, you know, I know that Deviant Moon is such a well-loved deck. Yes. And I find it really creepy. You don't like the, uh, the more um, cartoony? No. No, it's not. I can understand. It is a darker one. And so there we go back to, you know, it's not a personality that resonates so much with you. Right. But um, some people really like the darker stuff. And, and it's interesting because a lot of the people I know that love Deviant Moon and have been so excited about this new edition, which I agree is lovelier. I really, I, I think without, they're both good, but I think without the border, better. Right. And the people who love this deck are, are not people I would, you know, look at as being particularly dark people, right. particularly goth or, you know, but I, I look at that and I see a very goth deck. I got it. It is say. very goth. And, yes. and I'm so not goth. <laughs> And that's okay, you know, because there's oh, there might be one or two other decks you can choose from, you know, <laughs> out there maybe. But I, I just love this. I mean, look at the hot air balloon. Can you see uh, that? I can. I can. What now? That what card is it? That is. Let's see. I just pulled him out. That is the six of swords. Oh, a hot air balloon for the six of swords. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's really smart. I like it. Yeah, so on the Pamela one, that's the one where the people are in the boat. Right. Sailing away from the rocky water to the smooth, so. Right. Yeah. And here on this side, you see the flames. Yeah. So he's sailing away from all the burning and destruction. Nice. So. But, yeah, I do see where people may say, oh, that's a little creepy. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't like that, but. I just feel like you have to find the one that suits you and for whatever intention you need it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So anything else you'd like to share with us before we say goodbye? No, I, I just uh, want to encourage people that are even new in tarot. I, like I said, I've only started really doing this seriously for the last uh, three years, going on four. Want to encourage the newbies not to be afraid. You know, there's a world of tarot readers out there that have been doing this for decades and decades, but some of the best readings I ever heard were from people who picked up the deck a week or two ago. So I want the newbies not to be afraid. You've got a tarot voice too, so go out there and knock them dead. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I want to thank you so much for your tarot voice. Oh, thanks I, for having me. I think that, you know, humor should be a huge part of tarot. It yes. really should. I think tarot is funny in so many ways. Yeah. And I, I appreciate you for helping us find that. Oh, thank you so much. I enjoyed being here. 
Take care, Beth. Come back again soon. Okay. Love to. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Tarot Tidal, thanks for being on the Psychic Cafe. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. How are you? I am terrific. I am terrific. And I love your wolves in the background. You've changed your background since I saw I you. did. I did. I just turned my computer this way a little bit. <laughs> I like it. So as you know, we just played an interview with Beth Henry, and we just played one of her really funny videos. And there's a couple of things there that I want to speak with you about. One of the things she said that I just loved is about finding your tarot voice. And I just think that's such a great thought, a great conversation. So now I want to bounce that off of you. What do you think about that? What do you think about finding your tarot voice? Well, you know, I, she's one of my dear friends. And I, and I get to talk to her maybe a couple times a week, and we throw cards. And, and um, I like that phrase because she uses it a lot. And I said to her, Beth, when you use that phrase, what does that mean to you? Because she uses it a lot on her website when she teaches. And she says to her, that means how you can connect with your cards and use that connection to enhance yourself and the world around you. And having such a, a specific lens to look at that through, it's just, it's wonderful. Wow. So talk to us about your tarot voice. It's been a long, it's been a journey. It has been a journey. Um, you know, I started with classes and books and being self-taught and going to every class I could, getting every book, I, and I still do that. Every deck I can you know, at first, when you when you first learn, you want every single deck, and then you find that some are pretty, some are real. They really speak to you a lot, and some are just pretty, and you can't connect. And I've learned a lot from so many wonderful people in our community, um, like Mary Kay Greer, Twenty One Ways to Read a Tarot Card, or when I'm looking at a card, I sometimes think, if this card were asking me a question what would it be asking? And the one day I did that, it was the, the seven of swords, seven or eight. It's the one on the boat. The one on the boat, six. The six of swords. And my question that day that it was asking me was, what are you wanting to run away from? And on a different day, depending how I was feeling, the question might be different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But so many people just use it for just um, predictive purposes, and there's so much more you can do with them. They're great for meditation, for ritual, and finding my voice kind of came into getting over my fear of learning what my rules were going to be and what my consistency was going to be, and um, realizing that it's a real relationship with cards. Sometimes people say it's just cardboard with pictures. And on one level, I agree. But on another level, I don't. Because sometimes I'm dealing with a deck and I think, this deck, I don't, I'm just going to use my other deck because it speaks to me better on this issue. And sometimes we think, well, it's a different deck. It's going to tell us something different. But you know, when you're doing cards, you're talking to spirit, and it's not going to let you trick around to the deck that makes it sound prettier because you don't like what it says. Right. And so I'm learning that, and I'm learning to um, to embrace that and step out of my intuition, and, and it, it's been really, really freeing. Nice, nice. I love what you said, and I, I really want to bring this out because this is a good exercise for everyone, so all tarot students pay attention. Interpreting the cards as thought clues or cues even, as a thought cue. We think about the cards as answering questions, and they do. But what about, as you say, thinking about the cards as asking questions to get you to think about something. I like that. You know, like you did with the Six of Swords. So wouldn't it be fun? I have my brand new, ah, did you just see that? What is it? Somebody wants to tell you something. Did, oh my gosh, let's see. Okay, well, we'll use this one. 
Okay, interesting. All right, so first of all, I'm using my brand new Shadowscapes deck that Marcy Courier sent me, so I'm really excited. Do you know Shadowscapes? Not yet. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. So since this one jumped out, we'll use this one for me, and then, um, and then we'll do one for you. So what question? I got the Knight of Pentacles. You can see how cool that deck is. So what question is the Knight of Pentacles asking me? And for me, the Knight of Pentacles is very much about pursuing business. Mm -hmm. But it's also about pursuing taking care of myself, you know, because it's all of that earth stuff. So, you know, it's the obvious question I ask for myself every day, which is, what am I doing to take care of my business, my home, and myself? What am I doing to take care of all the things I need to take care of? And how do I pursue that most fully? Now, if I were to pull that and it were to ask me a question at this moment, uh -huh. this is where my life is, it would be saying to me, are you paying as much attention to the internal things as you are to the presentation nice. you're putting on the outside? Nice. That's a nice interpretation. And, and I think sometimes if you're stuck and you don't know what you're feeling, try to visualize a tarot card. I'm really feel what card really feels like what I'm feeling. And then go find that card in your favorite deck in a couple of them, put them side by side. And sometimes you're going to find a lot of different things going on that didn't come to your mind right away to get clarity. Right. So you're really exploring using the deck a lot of different ways. And, mm -hmm. and that's fabulous. Uh, how much of that is your own invention? How much of that are you getting from your studies? Some of both. You know, what I did at first is, is I started reading every single thing that come along and I'd never complete it. Or I'd read just so much and the new book would come. And so I would started to follow through with that way of thought and get what I can from that book. And then I go on to the next one and glean what I could. And then I was, for instance, the other day I picked up um, Barbara Moore's book, Tarot for Beginners. Mm -hmm. I love that book. And I started reading it and I wrote her, you know, and I said, Barbara, I love your book. I got so much out of it. And she said, it's for beginners. I'm, I'm glad you got so much from it. And I said, well, the thing that I got from it a lot were some of the course, and I don't know how to pronounce this wrong. It's correspondences or correspondencies. I don't know how to pronounce it. I would say correspondences, but probably either would be correct depending on what part of the world you're from. Well, I told her that really helps because sometimes we have specific questions regarding direction, season, time of year, mm -hmm. and I learned some really interesting perspective on some of those things. And I think continuing education is so, so important. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely. And your point that you can pick up a beginner book and get something out of it, I think, is a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Now, let's have you, let's go back. Let's have you do the, um, what question are you going to ask yourself thing? Pull a card and show us what it is and come oh, up. Oh, we're brave. Okay. Here's my question. Ah. Oh, nice. I love that card so much. I like this card too because, and it really speaks because right now it's really occurred to me quite lately, I can do 12 things really well, but I cannot do 12 things really well at the same time. <laughs> and when I do, it's not consistent and it loses the passion. And um, I guess it says to me that more of a statement, it just says to me, you've got the whole world in your hands and you could do anything. But really take your time as you plan. Take your time and your planning where you want to go. The world's right there in his hand, the little globe. And it's like, where do you want to go? And now you work, and then how are you going to get there? What are you going to do to be prepared to get there in that journey? So that's kind of what that says to me. How about you, if that was you? Um, pretty much the same. Um, if it were me right now, yeah, I mean... 
that card always to me one of the things that always asks the question is like what in the world do you want to do you can do and anything most, what in the world do you want to do and most people don't know don't you find so many people come to you and they think that their problem is money or love or any number of things but most often their problem is a symptom of something different and that's why tarot is so important because that can cut through all that stuff absolutely absolutely so i notice um hold your cards up again you are a crazy border cutter i am i confessed <laughs> to arwen the other day you know my favorite deck is a radiant rider weight deck even though they took pam pam pamela's initials off of it because it drew different attention to things that I hadn't noticed. And they got raggedy. I thought, oh, no, I use this deck too much. So I did my little border ectomy on them. And sometimes it's really cool because you can really see when you put them together. You can see how color flows. You can see some movement in things. It is pretty cool. It, I, I have to admit, now, I would never, I, would, I, I call you guys crazy border cutters. But... The reality is I could never be a crazy border cutter because I can't be trusted with sharp objects. Ah. If I went to cut the board, this is what would happen. If I went to cut the borders off my tarot cards, I would have a third of the deck with raggedy edges. I would have a third of the deck cut really pretty and a third of the deck not cut at all because I'd get tired and bored or distracted and walk away. <laughs> And my blood would be everywhere because in the process of cutting the cards, I would have cut myself. But you would be infusing your essence into your cards. You know, I have. <laughs> it's, it's actually true that I have, I have gotten paper cuts from my cards over the years. It has happened. I have bled on my cards. But <laughs> I, I really don't want to. You know the funny thing that happened in one of your webinars? Mm. It's so embarrassing. It was like about a year ago, and we were, you were doing a class about the suits, and we had them all separated, and I realized I'd lost my card. And, and the card that I lost was my judgment card. I thought, really? Come on. How <laughs> cosmic funny is that? And I looked for months and months. I could not find my judgment. And who wants to go to a tarot reader that's lost her judgment? <laughs> and I took that as a sign. I thought, you know, look at things, evaluate things. And I swear, I swear to goddess, I went there one day again and I counted them and every one of those cards was there. I don't know how it got back in there. I don't know how it left, but it got my attention. And, and that's how the universe works when you're in synchronicity. I'm doing so many things I've never dreamed in the last two years. I've never thought possible. And it's wonderful. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So let's talk about YouTube. One of the things I, I wanted to talk about, I was so impressed with Beth Henry's YouTube videos. She's really just started doing them and she gets more and more creative all the time. I've just started doing YouTube videos, which is not anything I ever pictured myself doing. You're doing YouTube videos. And if you look, I mean, I really believe there have been, as long as there's been YouTube, there have been tarot videos, right? Mm -hmm. But I remember a few years ago looking at tarot videos and finding them either extremely dry or extremely bullshit. Um, people saying things that I just wanted to say, oh my gosh, you know, I know that we all have our own take on the cards. We all have our own tradition. We have to honor that. But at some point, you know, some of the things people were saying just seemed so erroneous to me. And so I sort of blew off the whole YouTube thing, thinking that it was the domain of boring people and crazy people. And that would be it. But then all of a sudden, all of these really smart, creative people started doing YouTube videos on tarot. And so now, you know, we're all getting on board with this. I'm on board with it. You're on board with it. Obviously, Beth's on board with it. Donna Lay does some great videos. There's a lot of good videos out there. I'm curious to know what you like in a YouTube tarot video, if there are particular producers of YouTube videos about tarot that you like, what you find as far as starting to produce your own, what you like, what you don't like about making videos, and what your goals for your videos are. 
Wow, I look for a lot of things. I look at video specifically, if there's a deck I'm interested in, I'm gonna go look and see if there are YouTube reviews of it. Gotcha. And a lot of times that'll be the thing that'll sell me on a video and the thing that one person might totally not like about that deck is the absolute thing that I just find so appealing and love. I use it for that. I also use it for when I look to, um, when I look at YouTube reviews, for instance, I look at the very best things that they're doing and things that I want to emulate, you know, without taking their voice, but what are the strong suits and what are some of the things I don't want to do? For instance, if I am doing a shipper deck, automatically I point out how lovely the box is, the packaging, the magnetic closure, the ribbon hinge, the extra thick card stock and how they're not you know, they're not, um, they're not cheap with that. They really invest that. And if I find it's a deck that maybe doesn't speak to me a whole lot, I still treat that deck with, and I've seen you do this. I've seen you treat that with great care and respect because this is, is people's blood, sweat, and tears, and love they've poured into this. Right. And so I try to keep that in mind, and I'm still honest. And... Um, I decided that I wanted to do, I get so many people that ask questions. And I thought I wanted to start doing videos called Tarot Moments with Tarot Title. And I did too, and I got kind of sidetracked, but I want to do those again. Because I found um, eight pages of questions people ask us, and some are really serious, and some are things people really, really wonder. And I thought, you know, a five minute video, people can watch that, they're entertained, they might you know, think of a different way of perspective. Mm -hmm. So I, I do that a lot. I like that. I like that. I love re reviewing decks. And because we have this platform of interviewing people um, in podcasts and webcasts, it gives us access to so many people, me personally, that I would never have the chance to talk to. Right. And I have, that is, it has just totally enriched my life in so many ways. It is, you know, it's so different. As you know, I started reading tarot in the 1980s where a video was a, a VHS recording that you put into your video player. That was a video. We didn't have computers in our homes or cell phones or any of that. Um, but when I was first reading, when I was first learning to read tarot, I had taken a class at my local New Age shop where I bought my book and my deck and they had videos for rent. They had a very, a small shelf of videos for rent and there was a video on how to read tarot. Now the production quality on this was, I mean, I guess for the time it was great, you know, but it was not at all as slick as, as even the, the least slick YouTube video now. But I watched that thing probably 10 times before I returned it. And to this day, things I learned from that video are, you know, are, are part of, of who I am and what I do. And I think about that and I think, you know, what if, and, and you know, it is likely that this is true, that there are new tarot readers watching the videos that you make, that I make, that Beth makes, and our videos on some level become part of their tarot voice. Not that we want people to copy us and not that we copy people, but you know, you mentioned Mary Greer. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, it was Eden Gray at first and then also sure. Mary Greer, and then this video, and I don't even know the name of the person who made it. But all of those things were things that helped me find my tarot voice and on some level are a piece of my tarot voice, just like in life, our parents' voice are a piece, is a piece mm -hmm. of our voice. And so that's pretty cool. And I think it's interesting too that today's tarot student has all of this. You know, I had one video, it was probably an hour long. Now, a student can go to YouTube and they have days of videos. So it's it's a different world, you know, in, in terms of the tarot world, it's a very different world now. 
You know, one of my friends, she's just learning to read tarot. And, and she says, well, I don't know how to do that. And I said, well, there's things you need to, you need to know the basics, you know, the, the, the suits and what they mean and the major arcana, but you need to escape in the cards. And the card she drew just out of the blue was the nine of swords. And I said, what do you see here? And she described a lady on a bed. She looked sad, but if she wanted to, she could use all those swords and climb up it like a ladder and climb her way out of there. Nice. I would have never made that connection. Here's somebody who doesn't even read tarot saw that or the page of pentacles. You know, one of my friends was doing a reading about a medical thing. And here comes this page with this great big thing that looks like it. Maybe there's a change in medication that is going to help. Huh. We get so married to that. It always means this every time. Right. And, and we, we just kind of forget. And so I just I love seeing it through different people's eyes. Wow. So tell us what you're doing as far as broadcasting these days and, and how can we catch your shows? Well, I do a, a podcast called Coffee House on Magic Boulevard on Blog Talk. It airs on Sundays at noon Eastern. I was doing it two days a week, but I thought it's a lot. It's just too much. You know, I'm working on a novel that I've already written and I'm fleshing it out. I'm editing it. And I'm, I'm reading cards for a company as well as my regular job. And I'm working with the women in my circle. And we have a show called Hocus Focus on Tuesday nights. So I'm really trying to have some perspective in what I'm doing. I write articles for Mary Nails, a tune magazine. And so I'm really, I've just had an opportunity to adjust my priorities of what's important. The other day I made a list, what's important to me? And I skipped a line, I put all these things, podcasting my book, writing, you know, all these things that are so important. And at the end I thought, wait a minute, what's missing? And I thought, duh, my spouse, my family, my friends, my relationships. But we put those things off all the time and pay attention to things that make the most noise on the assumption that they can wait a few minutes and they'll be there tomorrow. But nowhere, nowhere, nowhere do we have that guarantee. They may not be, and we need to nurture those things that are most important to us. Otherwise, we're missing the whole boat. Sorry. And so that's brought me into a shift of perspective. Nice. Well, Tarot Title, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be on the Psychic Cafe tonight. How can people reach you if they want to get in touch with you? You can reach me on Facebook at Title Miller, or you can reach me at tarotitle.alchemicalartisans.net. And you know what? The other day I was talking to Jordan Hoggard. I love Penn. I miss the people over there. I just had to take a break for work-wise mm -hmm. to get my hours back, and I'm getting on my feet again. And we were talking, and I love that deck that he's made because it's, it has such rhythm and movement. Sure. And I said, you know what? When I sit looking at some of these decks, I almost find that meditation with tarot is like mental Tai Chi. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> wow. I like it. it really is because everything is targeted and focused and directed. And so... Perfect. Well, we got you back on pen here tonight, and I'm sure everyone's happy to see you. And uh, we'll see you on YouTube. We'll see you on Facebook. We'll see you everywhere you are. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Title. You take care.